What is the ultimate adventure bike for exploring and getting lost? It's the Rodeo Labs Trail Donkey. Oh, this is Stefan from Berkshire Bike Board. I'm going to talk to you about how I ended up with this Rodeo Labs bicycle and how I built it. Many, many years ago, one of our employees lived in Salisbury and he went off to school to be an engineer. And I'm like, whatever you do, you should stay in the bicycle industry and you should make something cool. And he's like, yeah, that's that sounds exactly right. And Lo and behold, he went off into finance, but always had this lingering desire to come back and build something in the bike industry. And he started a company called Princeton Carbon Works, which the wheels are. And he was in town visiting me one day and he's like, I just got this frame. Uh, I don't want it. Do you have any interest in buying it? And I'm like, what size is it? How much you want for it? He's like, yeah, it's a size 58. I'm like, it's a little big. And he wanted maybe a thousand bucks. I'm like, it's a super deal, well below retail. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. And my thought process at the time was, I'm gonna get a bigger bike and and this was in probably 2019, I don't remember exactly, but this is, you know, the whole emergence in the mountain bike world of longer and lower. And so I'm like, you know what, I like the idea of this. I had been riding a specialized Roubaix as my gravel bike and I jammed 32 centimeter tires in there and it was really not enough bike for the kind of riding I was doing. I was definitely under biked. I'm like, I want something that's really capable. I'm like, this is a perfect platform to do it. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm the 58 centimeter bike, I think it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna make me taller i'm getting older i like the taller head tube and i'm just going to put a shorter stem on it which is basically what we do for mountain bikes longer top tubes shorter stems means i can get behind the bike and really charge down rough gnarly descents and so i'm like i love this idea and so of course i went with the uh, carbon wheels uh, from prince tech he just come out with the new grit which is their all road slash gravel wheel set i put that on there i wanted a one by drivetrain i didn't want to have to deal with the two by drivetrain in the beginning uh, when i was doing this the options were pretty limited and so i had to kind of go a little outside the box i definitely wanted di2 shifting and so that limited me because it was 11 speed and trying to find a cassette that was large enough. I found this aftermarket cassette. It was an 1146, which was the biggest cassette I could get, uh, biggest range. But I didn't want to give up too much of the top end, but I still wanted lower than one to one. And so that's a 46 and the rear is a 46, which is a one to one. So that's just enough for me to get up the gnarly technical descents. I wanted a dropper post, which is once again, not normal in the gravel world. But once you mountain bike to the gravel dropper, you fully understand the benefits of it and getting your seat down has been awesome. But where I've actually found that the most benefit of using a dropper seat post is for wanting to go faster. Be able to drop and lowering your body, you can descend much faster because it lowers you. But this is a lev dropper seat post with 125 mil of travel. It was the only one that I think I could get that was lightweight. I think it's a carbon post in the 27.2, which there weren't a lot of dropper seat posts that were 27.2, which is the seat diameter size because most dropper posts were for mountain bikes. And I also wanted to be able to activate it with my shift lever because I was running a one by, I only have shifting on one side. My left shift lever does nothing. So I'm like, I want that shift lever to activate the dropper post. So I reached out to my Shimano rep and he's like, yeah, we can get you a lever. It's not gonna match the right lever, but I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I'd much rather have the shift actuation activate my dropper lever, which it does. And at the time it was pretty forward thinking, which was awesome. I went with XTR because the only way I was gonna be able to get the range in DI2 was to go with the mountain bike derailleur. So we have an XTR derailleur and went with GRX cranks, GRX shifter, the DI2 version, Version. And then I went with a Physique 3D printed saddle, which I'm a huge fan of. And I'm also running that on my current road bike, which uh, once you ride a 3D printed saddle, you realize that they're just pretty amazing. I went with a 46 flared bar carbon and that pretty much rounds out the build. Uh, Shimano XTR mountain bike pedals because I wanted SPDs. So when you're getting off and you're dealing with the rigmaroles of gravel riding where you've got to get over logs, and rocks and areas that were unforeseen blowdowns when you're taking the trail less traveled. So that's my rough idea for the build of the bike. I wanted something that I could explore and it's been an amazing bike. It's definitely taken me uh, all over Maine in some pretty rugged territory and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'm Jason Root, Stefan's brother, and my story with this bike is my bike was getting serviced. I borrowed this one and I was so blown away. I just kept borrowing it. And my brother's like, uh, okay, uh, okay. And I ended up doing the Festa 500 on this bike two years ago. Rode the bike off at midnight on Christmas Eve. Rode 112 miles. It was phenomenal. I just couldn't get over how well the bike rode. It was so comfortable. The pedal efficiency is amazing. It's got the oval ring. I swear by that. It really feels like it's kind of helping you along when you pedal. I feel like there's an electric motor. I call it the cheater bike. The gear 
bearing is perfect. I can go so fast on this bike and yet I can climb just about anything. And it's just an absolute dream bike. Super comfortable, super fast, so capable. I can't say enough about how awesome this bike is. And I'm so lucky to have my brother as somebody who does bikes because he does bikes really well. So I'm excited to take on some bigger adventures with this thing. Maybe Pakistan, maybe Chile, something crazy. You know, find the limit. It's hard to find the limit on this bike because it's so damn capable. Stefan did a phenomenal job building this bike up. So basically to sum it up, I went from Joey to pro -y. Oh yeah. I'm Jason Root and this has been an unbiased, unsolicited, candid review and experience of this bike. Again, the bike shop doesn't even carry the bike, so I can't really make any money off this video from a sales point of view, but we love this bike so much we don't care and go ride bikes because bikes are awesome.